Hey guys, Jim here. I want to share with you now one of my most recent acquisitions just arrived today from none other than Jason Browse at Browse Blades. You guys know I'm a huge fan, obviously, with the Silent Soldier Flipper, with the, uh, the Division. Love his stuff. He makes fantastic quality knives at what I think are below average prices. I still say he should be charging more, but hey, yeah, what the hell. So I, I kind of go back a little ways with this knife, back to about December of 2012. And I'm, I'm happy that I've got such a wonderful relationship with Jason. He shares with me from time to time concept drawings or early CAD drawings and kind of goes, hey, what do you think of this? Cool or not cool? And he showed this to me way back in December when it was initially being uh, concepted. And I went nuts. I'm like, I want the very first one that you're putting out. And before he even said anything, I said, man, that looks a lot like uh, Mikkel Willemson, which actually it is. He's like, yeah, I'm getting a chance to do a collaboration with Mikkel, and I'm really, really super stoked about it because, I mean, everybody respects Mikkel. He does such crazy way out designs, fantastic quality. I've been fortunate to uh, become friends with Mikkel as well. He's a fantastic dude. And... To see two great artists coming together and, and putting together one knife, it was really, truly exciting. Now, the original versions, or all of the versions, I should say, are done in a black G10. And when I had first started talking to Jason about this, I said, I want the prototype. That didn't end up working out as well as we had hoped. I should have gotten that at the end of January. Uh, but he had detent issues with it that weren't going to be corrected being a prototype. He's like, I just don't feel comfortable letting anything out of my shop that isn't perfect. And that's how I ended up buying the Division prototype. So when it came time for these to come out, I said, well, you know how I am. I'm kind of a pain in the ass, and I always want my stuff to be a little bit different than everybody else's. And I said, I'd really love to do some different uh, handles on this when you're ready. He says, okay, let me get them all produced and start getting them shipped and stuff so I can focus on yours without taking away any time from anybody else. And he was going to be uh, really busy with Blade and the Division and everything else. So I said, fine, I'm, I, I'm cool to just hang back and wait. And then I started watching everybody getting theirs and making their videos. And I was just going nuts because I really, really wanted to get one of these. The excitement was definitely there for this. So finally, I pestered him enough and he says, okay, I've got time. What do you want to do? And at the time, I wasn't really sure. And I said, you know what I want to try? I want to try C-Tech. I had just gotten my first C-Tech scaled uh, knife from Will Moon. Love the material. I think it's really cool. It's got a great three-dimensionality to it that brings out something unique and different. But I had not seen anybody do the contouring and carving that Jason had done on the G10 in the reloader. I said, if we order up some C-Tech, can you do the same scales? He's like, yeah, no problem. So, you know, it's, it's been a few weeks. It took a little bit longer than we expected. He ran into a few issues here and there with it. But, you know, that's to be expected on anything that's custom made. You know, and yeah, I could have just bought a reloader and I saw a couple going on the secondary market, people selling their used ones for really good prices. And I could have just sent this out to a pimper and had it done. But I really wanted to have the original reloader pattern and I wanted it to be done by the maker. I wanted it to be a true custom, not just a, you know, whatever knife sent out to be pimped. So Jason was cool enough to do that. Uh, great packaging, as always, as you would expect. Uh, got the zippered pouch that it came in and uh, more stickers than I could ever think of sticking on anything. And then of course the certificate of authenticity on there as well. Bingo, bango. And obviously marked as C-Tech D2 stainless steel. And I gotta tell you, the knife is smaller than I expected. I, mean, I, I consider that I have fairly normal average sized hands and I've watched everybody's videos everybody that's uploaded a video on YouTube with this knife and it looks so big in their hand and then I got it and went oh that's a lot smaller than I thought just so you know the blade is only three and a half inches long it's a tall blade it's a thick blade it looks bigger than it really is but it really is only three and a half inches long and the overall length uh, is 8.32 inches so it's not a really really big knife to give you the comparison, we'll take out a big browse, put it right next to the division, and you'll see the division is 
considerably larger. Now, for those that aren't buying uh, Browse knives yet, give you some more, I don't want to say generic, but more popular knives to compare it to. There it is up against a Chris Reeve Umnumzan. What else do we have here that would work? Spiderco Tenacious. A lot of people have the Tenacious. There we go, pivot to pivot. So you see it's a little bit bigger than a Tenacious. Tenacious is not a big knife. And last but not least, we'll knock the camera around a little bit. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Spiderco Tough. Almost identical in size to a Spyderco Tough. So if you've got one of those, uh, you're going to have an idea of what the knife is going to be like. I will tell you, though, it is considerably lighter weight than the Tough is. And that's the other cool thing. I don't know how lightweight the G10 model is. G10 really doesn't weigh all that much. But the C-Tech here, I mean, this thing weighs nothing. Looks fantastic. He did a beautiful flawless job as you would expect I mean Jason really is pretty meticulous on the details and I love how the light falls in and out of these these valleys the peaks and valleys on this material that's one of the things that I, I became attracted to with the SeaTech my favorite thing about SeaTech however are the edges Kind of like when you look at a really nice carbon fiber and you see the uh, outside edges of the carbon fiber. There's just something beautiful about it. And I find that the uh, the SeaTech does the same thing for me with that silver wire that's in there. Looks fantastic. The number on mine right here. Let's see if we can get it to focus. There we go. 238 of 500. The grind is amazing. Again, this is inspired off of a Mikkel Willemson design. And if I remember correctly, Mikkel said it was designed basically off his uh, P-Rock. I think the P-Rock has a little bit more of an angle to the blade. I don't really recall. But you see the obvious, uh, the cutout, the notch that's cut into the blade. They can be used to open the knife, by the way. So it's actually functional besides looking good and reducing a lot of weight. I love the grind on this. You guys know I love recurves. It's, again, more difficult to maintain and sharpen because it's not a completely flat edge. So it's a little bit harder when you go to sharpen it. But I love the aesthetics of it and I love the performance of it. When, you know, when you're cutting into something, when you've got this part of the blade into something and you pull straight across... It's forcing itself further into whatever it is that you're uh, going to be cutting into. All right. Then you get to the grinds. Oh, beautiful hollow grind for the main grind. Flat grind at the nose. Great geometry here. It just, it flows. It looks great. Nice top swedge. I think without the top swedge, it wouldn't be nearly as impressive, but you've got such wonderful geometry here at the tip of the blade. Excellent job, Jason. I love it. A uh, nice satin finish. Uh, as of now, all the satins are gone. The only available versions from Jason will be the blackout editions where he's black DLC'd the blade, black G10, black hardware, black everything. There's only one thing I'm not a fan of, and you guys know I despise buys a deep pocket carry clip makes no sense to me it makes it harder to get the knife out when i'm trying to grab for it i've got less to grab on here I've, i have nothing to work with and it's not concealing shit and i'm so tired of hearing people say well well the deep pocket carry clip when i've got that in my pocket it's so much more discreet really really how many things are you carrying in your hip pocket that has a giant freaking clip on it. It doesn't look like a pen clip. And really, nobody carries a friggin' pen in their hip pocket anyway. Everybody knows you're carrying a knife. There's a big clip hanging out. That's just the way it is. Like I said before, it's not rocket science. So for me, I'd rather have an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch 
sticking up, making it a little bit easier to grab onto. And by not having a lanyard hole on here, it's going to make it more of a challenge for me to carry this as an EDC and feel that it's reliable and, and super fast on the deployment. But I'll look past that because I can actually run a lanyard probably right through this. It's going to be kind of sloppy, but it can be done. And the other thing is, I don't know why he did a blasted finish on the clip. It makes no sense. All of the hardware is satin finished. All the titanium is satin finished. Blade is satin finished. The one and only single thing on this knife that's not is the clip. So I'm not really sure what the idea was behind that. So Jason, you know, I love you, bro, uh, but I got to give you a knock on that. Everything else in the knife is flawless, perfect, great, fantastic. Um, that just, that made no sense to me why that was finished that way. But, I mean, that's not really much to complain about. So you've got his bearing system in here again. He likes using bearings, and it flips like a dream. Again, it's more of that push down, just like on the Silent Soldier, uh, very much like having a hinder. You're not stroking back on it. You're actually pushing down on it. Uh, opposite of that would be the Division. The Division, you can actually do both ways. You can push down on it if you want to, or as you saw, I was able to just stroke back on it, and it just flies right open. So this is a really nice flipping action. This is right out of the box, guys. I've had this in my pocket for a few hours today when I had things to do. Um, I flipped it maybe two or three dozen times, and it just flies out. Great flipping action. Nice detent. Does a great job on his detents. Here's the lockup, which I think is uh, perfectly acceptable. Gosh, look at that C-Tech. Isn't that great? He also beefed up the titanium liner on this side as he was experimenting with the early productions and with the, uh, with the prototype. He realized that he really wanted to have a thicker piece of titanium for the liner lock. He felt it was going to be more stable that way, and that's exactly what he did. So it's actually going to be thicker on this side than on this side. This is just basically a frame support on the other side. It doesn't need to be as thick. And a lot of people thought it was kind of weird at first, and then they even mentioned in their videos, I started looking at other knives, either in their collection or online, and realized, hey, actually quite a few manufacturers or makers have done that, so it's not really that much out of place. Uh, as he likes to do, he has his name emblazoned on the spine of the blade. I actually like that, because one of the things that irks me sometimes... You can find some gorgeous knives out there, and they got a friggin' billboard across their blade. Um, Scott Matsuoka is one. I want one of his knives so bad, but I refuse to have a huge billboard in the middle of my beautiful blade. You know, Microtech tends to do that. You know, I, I guess I could find it a little bit more acceptable on a two, three, four hundred dollar production knife than on something that's going to go over four, five hundred dollars, especially when you get into a custom. So to, to knife makers out there, yes, you want to brand your product. You want to have your name there. But you know what? That's what your pocket clip is for. And you could be more discreet putting a small logo here like so many popular makers do. Or do what we're seeing a few others doing now right across the spine of the blade. I think it looks great there. And when it's folded, you can't miss who made that knife. Centering is nice. I know he was having a little bit of an issue with that once we went to the C-Tech and he had to machine brand new screws. That was the other thing. If I was going to do something that was this custom, anything else had to be done besides just sticking scales on here, I wanted it to be done by the maker so it was a true custom. And yeah, he had to uh, make brand new screws himself for this to make everything work together, to get everything centered right, to get the action where it needed to be. I am overjoyed, overwhelmed. I love the dramatic look of the C-Tech. Some people like the look, some people don't. That's fine. I happen to love it, especially when it's been contoured like this. The only real gripe I have besides the pocket clip, the jimping is excessive right back here. It is, it's actually a little bit sharp. It's got some real edges to it. And the only time that's really going to be an issue is when you're flipping, flipping, flipping. Because remember, you're pushing in, not just stroking back. So you're pushing in to that jimping. 
Is it, is it going to hurt your delicate little fingers? No, it's not that big of an issue, but if you're like me and you'll, you'll sit there, you know, on your couch watching a movie, breaking in your knife, flipping it two, three, four hundred times, after a while, that gets to be much. And this is not really something that's only a problem with this knife. You guys know I talked about that with the XM24 and XM18s. I felt the same way. And actually, the hinderers are a little bit more abusive on the finger because they don't flip for shit. So you're always having to overdo it and you're pushing super hard on their flipper. At least with Jason, he knows how to make a flipper flip. And you don't have any of those issues. So what I say is this, if you've been considering one, you've seen them on the websites, you've seen people doing reviews, you've seen pictures, and you were unsure as to whether you wanted to spend the money, because you know what, it's still not a cheap knife. I think he's doing them, what is it, three fifty, three seventy five. dollars I mean, I paid a tremendous amount more because of the custom work done here, but I think for the money you're spending, you're getting one hell of a great utilitarian EDC knife one that you don't have to be afraid to use, one that's got great multiple hand positions. You could choke up nicely on the blade with the little choil that's up there. He blocks off uh, the lead into the blade there, so that's not sharp, so you can jam your fingers in there. Your fingers fall nicely into the here, and the way this is radiused right here, your fingers drop right into place there, almost like they're, they're finger choils on the sides. Uh, no hot spots when I really, really grip down. I don't really feel anything digging into me from the clip, so the clip is well made as far as that goes. I think it's an impressive look whether you get, you know, the standard G10 or whatever. And unfortunately, uh, and this seems to be happening to me many, 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 many uh, times in a row, this was made purely as a one-off for me by my request, and he was only going to make the one. Well, he kind of put up pictures of it when it was in progress, and so did I, on Instagram, on his Facebook and whatnot. A lot of people started piling on, going, make me one, make me one, make me one. I want one just like it. So I'm fairly certain at this point we're going to see two, three, four, five, ten more of these with the C-Tech. You know, and, and, you know, really, I can't complain. If, if the guy's got people beating down the door to make him something, you know, he's got to make money. So at least I know this was the very first of them. And hopefully all the rest will be a little bit different from mine anyway. Ah, love how this thing feels, though. It's slimmer than I expected. It's lighter than I expected. And it's smaller in the hand than I expected. But the great thing is it still fits nicely in the hand. I don't feel that it's too short. I lock into it nicely. It's got a nice reverse grip to it. Actually, really nice. Your finger, your thumb kind of goes right around this, locks in place. And again, going back to the way the contours are done, it drops down here into that valley and the pads of your fingers drop into it. So it's a nice secure feeling all the way around. No sticky lock, nice smooth operation at the pivot. Actually, wow. How you like that, huh? Huh? There you go. I thought you'd like that. Anyway, I think it's just an awesome, aggressively designed knife. If you've ever considered one, you've looked at them, grab one. If you find one in the secondary market, grab it. Jump on it. It's absolutely worth the money. If you're looking at the blackout model, grab it. Grab it before he's sold out. Look what happens every time you, you hesitate to pull the trigger on, maybe it was a Silent Soldier, Silent Soldier Blackout. Jesus, those sure went fast, didn't they? The Division, I think those are gone. The Division Blackout is out now, which I'm really considering getting one of those. His stuff is flying off the shelves. So no longer is he that uh, quote-unquote up-and-comer, as I said many, many, many months ago on earlier reviews. He has become established. People know his name. People know his quality. He's got fantastic customer service, unique, interesting designs, and his partnership with Mikkel on this collaboration could not have been better. I've got a tremendous amount of respect for Mikkel and for Jason I'm really glad to see them join forces using Mikkel's uh, overall design, Jason's manufacturing, fantastic quality, 
and his warranty backing it up. I don't see how you can go wrong. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Thanks, guys.